Hi everyone and welcome to Spray the World, the channel dedicated to street art and urban art. First thing first, I hope you all had great holidays and if you're lucky enough to still be on, well enjoy. Today I've decided to speak about the city that I live in, Paris. You know, the capital of France where you can find the Eiffel Tower, the Louvre, Notre Dame, Le Sacré Coeur, Le Moulin Rouge, etc, etc, etc. But this is not the subject of our video, as I will speak more precisely about the artist that works in our streets. This is the first video of a series dedicated to the artists that work in Paris, so I really hope that you will enjoy it, as there will be many more to come. So in this video, we'll speak about the artists that stick art on the walls. If you live in Paris or you've visited, you've necessarily seen the work of those artists, but you might have passed by without knowing who or what it was. So here is my first stop spray about Paris dedicated to the art of gluing things on the wall. Enjoy! So just before we get started, I just want to apologize in advance as I won't be able to speak about all the artists as there are so many, so I'll focus on the ones that are the most active in our streets. So just like the Black Eyed Peas said it, let's get it started. Let's get it started, let's get it started in here, let's get it started. Can you believe this song is already 12 years old? Anyway, in the exposition we have the French artist Bastek that literally stick on the walls canvas that he painted. With those canvas, Bastek managed to popularize his signature style, those oval shapes that is in fact an abstract way to represent people. By using this shape and the eyes, Bastek erased everything that segregates us from one another, such as sex, handicap, professional life, color of skin, etc, etc. This allows the viewer to easily identify and to the character represented. I, I mean, I hope I don't look like an oval shape with just eyes, though. Anyway, through his canvas, Bastek tells us a story different every time, and that anyone can interpret at will. But what I like about Bastek work is that it is really colorful, and since he put his canvas quite high, you really need to get close and take time to appreciate all the details on it, otherwise you will miss something. Plus, by definition, canvas are very fragile and are not meant to be in the street. So they have a very short life expectancy, then they start to be torn and it's really cool also to see afterwards. In the seventh position, we have Antra Laru. Antra's work is very unique in Paris, as she sticks on the walls of her street, modeling of her breasts. And she already put more than 500 of them. So just to be clear, I'm not a pervert, but thanks to Intra, when I walk in the streets of Paris, I see breasts everywhere. Okay, what can I say, I'm a man, I love it. As you can see on those images, Intra decorates each breast in a very unique way every time. And this comes from various inspiration. And by doing so, she brings colors to the gray walls of her city and puts smiles on people's face, just like mine right now. Just so you know, at the beginning, Intra used to use a very strong plaster, but since people started to steal her work, she now use a very fragile plaster, so it is now impossible to take out those breasts without breaking them. So, to those who tried to steal her work, back the fuck off. Those were made for the public to see. Plus, would you normally grab someone's breast in the street just like that? No, so keep your hands to yourself and touch with the eyes. In this exposition, we have an artist that literally transformed the streets in a jewelry store by adding diamonds to them. And his name is Le Diamantea, translated in The Diamond Dealer. Well, of course he doesn't put real diamonds in the streets, but he picks up abandoned mirrors in the street and by cutting them and painting them in a very stylish way, he managed to transform them in diamonds. Then, when this is done, he just needs to hit the street and to put them on walls. He started to do that in Paris, but now you can find his work in many other cities such as New York, Miami, London, or even Montréal for example. What I like about his work is that Le Diamantaire used one of the most famous symbols in the world to prove that street art works are indeed jewels in a city. Plus, I love the fact that he is using garbage to create a piece of art that is now an object that attracts the eyes and an object of desire as there are so many people trying to take them off. And again, please don't do that. And when you think about it, diamonds are a girl best friend, but if diamonds are made of garbage, then garbage are a girl best friend. So now guys, thanks to me, you know what to offer to your girlfriend for Valentine's Day. I'm sure I made a lot of enemies right now. In the fifth position, we probably have the artist that decided to stick on the wall the most unbelievable thing, 
bicycles. And his name is Ride in Peace. I guess he calls himself like that because as you can see on the image that I'm showing you right now, the bicycles he sticks on the wall are usually broken, as if the rider had been in an accident. So maybe it's like a message of prevention saying be careful when riding a bike in the city. I don't know. But this is just one interpretation. The other one that I have is that those bicycles were meant to be thrown in the garbage. And writing peace by hanging them on the wall and transforming them in a piece of art gives them a final resting place. Hence the name. Right in peace. And a bit like Le Diamantaire, he is one of those artists that managed to transform garbage in art in a clever way. And that's why you'll find their work sometime one next to the other in the streets. Just to clarify one thing, Right in peace is not the only one that hangs bicycles on a wall. There is another artist called Monsieur BMX that works in Montpellier, another city in the south of France. His concept is a bit different as he usually adds colors to the bicycle and use all types of them and usually in good shape. I wanted to speak also about him because I like his work but he mostly works in Montpellier even though you can find some piece in Paris but honestly I don't know who had the ID first and who started it but I love both of their works I didn't want to have any problem with the artist so congratulations to the both of you and to those who climb on the walls to try to steal bicycle parts come on guys really in the fourth position, we literally have the face of street art in Paris, Grégos. Grégos is an artist based in Montmartre, a place where you can find, among other things, the Sacré Coeur and the Moulin Rouge, but it's also a great place to find street art in Paris. Grégos has developed a unique concept that basically consists in gluing modeling of his face all over the city that shows different humor, such as smiling, sad face, or when his tongue is sticking out. And as you can see on the image that I'm showing you right now, Gregos paints his face, allowing him to create new composition every day. And this is really cool because it allows him with the same model to create different art pieces every time. He also started to work with different types of size of faces, going from human size to faces that are not bigger than my thumb. And this allows him to create much bigger installation and create, for example, iconic portraits on canvas or also in the street using kind of a mosaic style. I love this one that is very cool, for example, that you can find in the Marais. What I like about his work is that everyone knows his face but don't really know who he is. Then he has a really good sense of placement, allowing the viewer to play with the faces every time he finds one. Speaking of which, Grigos loves when people take selfies with his faces and send them to him. And he actually publishes one every day from the one he received. So don't hesitate, try it, it's fun. And finally, what is great about his work is that he used plaster, so his work in the street evolves with the time and his face starts to get broken, the color starts to fade, and sometimes it gives an impressive result, like this one, for example, that I really love. If originally he started to work in Paris, now you can find his work all over the world, in other countries such as England, the US, Greece, and even Japan now. And if you like his work, please don't try to take it off. You can just go on his website and buy a face there already painted. Now things are getting serious as we're entering the top three. In the third position, there is an artist that I really like called Jizov, with whom I obviously share the same references. Jizov has a really fun concept that consists in gluing octopus on walls. But not any type of octopus. Octopus inspired by the ones from a video game called Wonder Boy. And if you're under 30, you've probably never heard of this game. So, for you youngster, this is how it looks like. Just to be clear at the time, it was a great game and very popular. I know, looks old. Anyway, Jizop was inspired by those mean octopus and decided to mix them with other famous characters from various inspiration. So now you can find in the street, for example, octopus that are mixed with Jap animation, for example, with Saint Seiya, Dragon Ball, Goldorak, but also with cartoons such as The Simpsons, Spongebob, or South Park, for example. And of course, since it's an octopus from a video game, he mixed it also with other characters from other video games, such as Mario Bros, Sonic, and even with movies, with one of my favorite of all, the R2-D2 octopus. Yes, what can I say, I'm a big fan of Star Wars. I even have an R2-D2 right there, and also Legos from Star Wars. Um. 
Sorry about that, I don't know what crossed my mind. Anyway, I cannot do the list of all the octopus that he did. Like I said before, he did more than a hundred different ones. So, if you want to see them all, you just have one solution. Hit the street to try to find as many as possible. So, enjoy and let me know which is your favorite one. I wish I had an octopus in my house. That is a weird sentence to say. In the second position, we have an artist that is actually not French, but works often in our streets every time he's passing by. And his name is Kai. Kai means a lot of things in different languages, but in fact it is just his nickname since he's a child, so I'll stick to this. Kai is a very complete artist, as he masters a lot of different techniques such as culture, painting, collage or molding. And of course here we'll focus on the molding part that he sticks on walls. As you can see on those images that I'm showing you right now, Kai has developed over the years a very unique signature figurative style character. There are so many things that I love about Kai's work. First I love the idea of the frame around the piece. This really emphasizes the fact that now streets are like museum in open air and this is an idea that I cherish a lot. Plus since you are not used to see frame in the streets, you're really attracted to the piece and you go closer to see what is the subject represented in it. And speaking of subject, this is another thing that I really love about Kai's work, is that his center subject is our society and all her excesses that makes you lose track of what is important in life. I could analyze all his pieces as there's always a message behind each and every one. But I'll just choose one or two and leave the others for you to interpret. I love for example this one that shows how much we are prisoners of our cell phone nowadays and that we cannot live without them. But please, if you're watching this on your cell phone, continue because this is a great use of it. But I think my favorite piece of all is this one that raised the question of forced consumerism in our society. This work is really brilliant and sad as it is true. Anyway, all of his pieces are great and I really invite you to go and check them out because I'm sure you'll find some that will speak to you as they speak to me. Plus the fact that he's using a cartoon character to spread his message makes it even more powerful as anybody can understand it, young or adult alike. Honestly, I think of all the artists that I'm speaking of in this video, this is the one I would love the most to have a piece from. But again, I will never take a piece from the street so please don't either. Before revealing who is my favorite artist of all the ones that sticks arts on wall, here are a few others that you will find a lot in Paris and that are worth mentioning also. There is for example Bea Peel, Peel P-Y-L-L, -L, as in Puzzle Your Life. She basically put puzzle pieces all over the city that she painted as an image of life and all those little pieces that are part of someone's identity. It is fun, you can look for them. There is also Shatters that create mosaic image with broken glass. It is fun and I like the fact that Shatters use only the natural color of the glass. This brings something to his creation. Then there is Ore, which is an artist that is not based in Paris, but in Normandy, but he works a lot here. It is during a trip to Mexico that Ore discovered the Quetzalcoatl snake that is now at the center of his work. And as you can see on the image that I'm showing you, he transformed it in a very graphic way. And now we have it all over our city. Then there is Mr. P, and it is important to pronounce it this way as there is another French artist called Mr. P that does something completely different so we don't mix them like this. Mr. P sticks portrait of the General de Gaulle all over our cities where he usually tags his hat in different way making each piece unique. Final worth mentioning also Kiss Van Dijk. I have no idea if I'm pronouncing this the right way, so to you Kiss, I'm sorry. This artist is famous for his modeling of mice that is sometimes glued to the walls, but most of the time he just displays them in a very nice way on the ground for the viewers to just pick them up and bring them home. I wish I could speak more about all the work of those great artists, but it is time to reveal who is my number one. And you probably might have guessed who I'm about to speak of, since he's the most famous artist in this category of art, and also because I've hidden a clue in all the video that is very very discreet. Of course I'm gonna speak about Invader. But just to be clear, I'm not gonna spend too much time on his work as I'm gonna do a portrait in the future about him. But still, here is an overview of his work. Invader is known worldwide for his mosaic work inspired by the classic video game Space Invader from 1978. Invader started his production in 1996 and since then he invaded 67 cities around the world and put more than 3,350 invaders on the wall at the moment of the video, of course. As you can see, most of his mosaic work are inspired by the invaders from the video game and some are small and some are much bigger. Even though Space Invader was the video game that started everything, Invader also pays tribute to other famous video games such as Mario Bros, Mega Man or Pac-Man. 
He also likes to work with famous characters from movies such as the Captain Spock for example from Star Trek, many characters from Star Wars such as Luke and Darth Vader in London, Princess Leia with Princess in Paris, or also C-3PO and Chewbacca still in Paris also. Those are really cool. And did I say that I'm a fan of Star Wars? <laughs> I could continue with the list, but like I said, there's more than 3,000 pieces, so maybe another time. Few fun facts about his work. As far as I know, Invader is the only street artist that sent twice his work into space. The first time was in 2012, where he used a weather balloon to take his work into space. The second time was in 2015, where he directly sent one of his pieces to the ISS space station, where it's now hanging on a hatch, as you can see on this image. How cool is that? I wonder how you call this, space art maybe? He also completed this year his biggest piece to date on the Hospital La Salpetriere à Paris with this huge doctor house as you can see. Just so you know, this piece is 10 meters high and 5 meters wide. This is probably the invader the hardest to miss. For that you just need to flash them with your cell phone and you will score some points for each invader flashed. It is really a cool way to create your own collection of invaders. For example me I found only 134 so far. Far from the best player who is at 1446 invaders. This guy is clearly a real fan. Plus for me the application is the best way to know if the invader is really made by him or it has been made by someone else or it is just the work of another artist that used mosaic also. For example in Paris we have another artist that is called Megamat and that use also mosaic but his subjects are very different and it's very enjoyable also as you can see on the image that I'm showing you. And by using the app you will know that this is not an invader but the work of someone else and after you just need to look to try to find who did it. The only problem with Invader's work is that it became so popular that now people are trying to steal his pieces or just destroy it so they can create copy and sell it on the black market. Please don't do that and please do not buy it because you will never be able to know if it's a real Invader or if it's just a 5 euro copy. Plus, if you ask Invader, he will never give you a certificate of authenticity as his work is made for the public, not for private collectors. This gives me the opportunity to thank the reactivation team, a group of fans of Invaders that repairs or replaces the work of the artist once he has been taken off so that the public can enjoy it again. So to you guys and girls, a big thank you. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, don't forget to leave a thumbs up below and to share it, of course. I sincerely hope that now you will pay more attention to all those little great details that we have in our city. And please don't hesitate to share your pictures with me of those artists and also let me know if I forget to speak about someone. Because yes, I don't know all the artists and new ones are coming up every day. As usual, if you want to know more about all those artists that I spoke of, you'll find the links to their website in the description below. And soon I promise I'll do other video like this one, where I'll study the work of the Parisian artists who do, for example, college, or the one who do stencil. Like this, you'll be able to enjoy even more our city and the streets that are really great to walk in. And finally, remember that you can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. So, until next time, don't forget to spray the world. See ya!